right. Praise God. Amen. The pastor's not here tonight. You look around, you won't see him. Uh, he's asked me to uh, bring a word for you tonight. And I intend to try to do that. I was uh, thinking uh, this past week of what God would have me bring. And he, he brought my memory back to when the last time I spoke, which was on a Sunday night. And uh, I, I looked back through my notes and I found my message. And you realize, I don't know if any of you realize that it's been a little over a year ago. It was September a year ago when I brought the last message here on a Sunday night. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I don't expect anybody to remember what I spoke about, but uh, I remember it quite well. And the message tonight is going to tie into it a little bit. And it actually ties into a little bit about uh, what the pastor spoke about Sunday. Now, I will ask you, does anybody remember what the pastor spoke about Sunday? Did he say something about stewardship? Nope. Yeah. yeah. He did, didn't he? A little bit about stewardship. And about tithing your time and your talents and your treasures. Doing work for God. And using your time and your talents and treasures to work, to do a work for God. Doing something for God. And the last time I spoke to you, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to that just for a brief instant. And I spoke about a parable. And the parable I spoke about was the sower and the seed. The sower and the seed. And you remember I spoke about sowing seed and sowing the garden. And just the, uh, the seed represented the word. Sowing the seed into your heart. Your heart represented the ground. That you sowed into. You sowed into your heart. And you also sowed the word. Which is the seed into other people. When the seed is sowed into your heart. And you can use that seed. That's sowed into your heart. To sow into other people. And uh, this, I, there was, when I spoke that message. I talked about the different kinds of ground. The, the stony ground. And the, the ground with thorns. And see, there was four, four kinds of ground. There's four. Your heart represents the. Let's see. Your heart represents the ground that the seed sowed into, and there's four kinds of hearts that the seed is sowed into. One is the heart that falls by the wayside. One is the stony heart. One is choked with thorns, and one. Is good ground. One is good ground. So we want our hearts to be that good ground that the word is sown into. And it's sown into that good ground and then it grows. It flourishes. It's water. It's fertilized. And it's tended to. And because it is, you reap the rewards from that. And when I spoke that time, I talked about tillage, the actual comparison of having a garden. And I ask everybody, have you ever had a garden? And most people have. Most people have tended a garden at some point. And it compared to that parable. Some people, uh, they, they want to, they, they expect to reap without having sown. And how can you expect to reap something or to receive something when you haven't sown anything? If you don't sow the word into your heart, into that good ground, how do you expect to reap anything? If you have a piece of ground here and you till it and you, you make it pretty, you get all the stones out, all the rocks out, all the thorns out, and make it good ground, and you just sit back, you water it, sun shines on it, but if you don't sow anything into it, you're not going to reap anything out of it. Is that right? Yeah. You got to put something into it, right? Yeah. You got to put some work in it. That's what the pastor was talking about Sunday. Being a good steward. Putting some of your tithes and your time and your treasures into it. So that eventually you'll reap something from it. So that's sort of going to lead up to my message tonight. Now, 
I noticed if you go around about the countryside in the last few weeks, seen a lot going on in the fields. Seen a lot of corn being picked. If you haven't seen it already, pretty soon you'll see a lot of the soybeans being picked. I've seen uh, potatoes that were dug. And I've seen uh, millet that's been harvested. You go a little further north, you see a lot of other things that's been harvested that grows in it. I saw onions that were dug. People's been reaping out of their gardens. I don't know if you've had a garden, but you've probably gotten some squash, and some tomatoes out of somebody's garden. If you bought it in the fruit stand and vegetable stand on the side of the road, it come out of the garden somewhere or out of the field where it was, had, been, had been harvested. So it's harvest time, is it not? Somebody has reaped the rewards of the work that they have, have done. So uh, that's again falls back on the message I spoke over a year ago about sowing the word of God into your heart and it's nourished, it's watered, it grows and you reap the rewards from it. So when it's harvest time, it's due season. Harvest time comes in due season, does it not? It's a due season. So that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. In my scripture that I'm going to start with and refer to is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. That's what I want to open with. So I got it. I got started here. So this is where we're going to start the, the teaching tonight. And it won't last. It won't be long. But I hope you can get something out of it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And all of you have heard this verse, this chapter, this scripture before. It's not new. It's not something strange to you. I'm sure you've all heard it dozens of times. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I'm going to read it again. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Ladies and gentlemen, it's due season. It's due season for the farmers here now. They've been harvesting their crops, been bringing them in. I'm sure they're in a big hurry this week to try to get their corn in before the hurricane hits. They'll try to get what they can before it blows down. Of course, with the equipment they have nowadays, they can get a lot done in a short length of time. Even if the hurricane blows the corn down, they've got equipment now that can pick it up, most of it, and lose very little. Uh, so they've got a lot of advancement in equipment. But what I want to talk to you about is what this word says. It's a promise. This is a promise from God. This is one of God's important promises to us about the work that we do for Him. God has a work for good stewards. What God, what the pastor was talking about Sunday, we all are stewards of God. And for good stewards that He gives a work to do, He wants you to work and He wants you to do it well and diligently. And in due season, if we faint not, we'll reap a reward. God wants to bring you encouragement. He's encouraging us in this verse through what Paul is saying. Paul is telling us that God is faithful and God is able to keep us through our works, our labors. That he promises us that if we faint not, we continue to do our works and our labors. That he promises there's a reward for it. That you will reap in due season. There's a time and a place when you will uh, reap a reward. And God's faithful. In his faithfulness, he uses Paul to remind us that doing good and living a Christ-like lifestyle, you will begin to get weary at some point. There is weariness in doing, living, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever told you that living for Christ and living a Christian lifestyle is easy peasy. And somebody may tell you that, but it's not always true. 
is a lifestyle that you love, you fall in love with. It's called you fall in love with Christ. You develop a personal relationship with Christ. And you work with Him and for Him because you love Him, because you trust Him, because you desire to please the Father. That's what I do. I do things that I do for the Lord because my desire is just like Jesus said His was. Jesus said, I, my desire, I desire to please the Father. I'm here to please the Father. And I want to follow after the, the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the example for all of us to follow. And his example was to be pleasing to the Father. And I also myself want to be able to do that. So what I'm asking here, you know, farmers, gardeners, People who do works, when you first start a garden, <coughs> you know, you get into it, you've got the soil all tilled up, it's nice, you go out there and you plant your seed and you're excited. It's exciting to plant a garden. It's exciting to plant a crop. It's exciting to do a new work for God because you know something's going to happen. It's exciting. You see new things happening. And you get out there and you've you got everything just right, things is nice. You've been provided a room to work in. You've been provided a, a fresh paint job on the wall. And you got materials to work with. And you know that you, you said, I'm doing a work for God. This is going to work out. I'm going to see that somebody gets blessed through me. God's using me. I'm planting a seed in somebody. Whether you're doing a work for the youth, whether you're teaching a Sunday school class, <coughs> excuse me, whether you're teaching a Bible study, whatever it may be. Maybe you're doing the work across the road in the fellowship hall, you're working for the women's ministry, maybe you're doing the jail ministry, uh, anything, it could be anything. Whatever, something, a work in the church, and you're excited about it because it's something that all of a sudden you see, well, I can do this. It's something I can do. I can make a difference in somebody's life, and you're excited about it. It's just like planting that garden. And you sow seeds, you sow a row of beans, you sow some cucumbers, and you sow some, some squash. And you say, you know, I, this, is, this is great. I'm going to see a harvest from this. And then you sit and you've got it all planted. It looks nice. All the rows are straight. And you sit back and say, now I'm going to watch it grow. You get out there and you, you sleep on it. You come out the next day and you look. You see the, see the ground started cracking. You see if any of those sprouts have come up. You hope the sun shines on it. So I hope it's warm today. So this stuff will warm this ground up. This stuff will grow. Same thing in your work for God. You say, Lord, give me a word. Give me something to say. Give me something to do. Show me, Lord, what you want me to do. I want to be pleasing to the Father. Same thing with your garden. And you look and say, oh, the ground's cracked just a little bit. I believe I see something green coming up. You see some growth. Same thing in the work you do for God. You see some growth. Something happens. And somebody says, you know, I've never heard it that way before. I've never seen that before. I, you, you've told me, you showed me something that I just didn't know. And I, I appreciate what you said. I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for those curtains on the wall. They look so nice. I appreciate you putting them up. Or thank you for the, the, the paint where you painted the room. Or put the shelves on the wall. Thank you so much for that. It looks so nice. If someone gives you a compliment for a work you've done and you didn't work for God, you didn't do it for the compliment, you did it for God. You say, God, thank you for that. I appreciate you letting me do that work for you. Then your garden starts to grow. You got little beans sprouting up. You got little squash plants coming up. And you say, look at everything God's doing. He's, he's making my garden grow. And I appreciate that so much. And it continues to grow. It starts to mature. It gets bigger and bigger. Your garden's all nice and green and pretty. Get a little rain on it. Or you water it yourself. Put a little fertilizer out there. It starts getting better and better. Same thing with your work for God. You get, you get to see somebody at your place of work. Or you see somebody in the grocery store. And say, let me tell you what God's done for me. Let me tell you what kind of work God's letting me do for him. And you witness with him witness to them. And you tell them about what you're doing for God, the work that God's picked you out to do. He's chosen you to do a thing. He's chosen you to call somebody on the telephone. 
and encouragers. They've been sick. You call them up and say, I heard you've been sick. I'm so sorry. Let me pray with you. And it gives you an, an, a, a moment of encouragement to encourage them. And when they get you get through on the phone, they say, thank you so much for calling me. Thank you so much for encouraging me. I appreciate that so much. You're just a God sin. And you are. You are. Because you get a work for God. And you tithe a portion of your time. A portion of your time. You are a good steward with your time. Your garden continues to grow. And then all of a sudden you look out there and say, wait a minute. There's something green down there that's, that's not what I planted. What is that? Hey, got some weeds in the garden. Ugh, got some weeds. Wait a minute, what is that? You look, you get down there, you turn the leaf over, whoa, there's bugs on these leaves. That thing's got holes in it. They're eating my garden up. So you got to get the hoe out and you chop the weeds and you chop the weeds and the sun's shining down on you and it's hot. You're sweating. And I got to do something with these bugs. So you got to go to the store, get some insect killer and you spray, you spray your collars or your, your plants and try to get the bugs off of them. And man, that was hard work. Phew. And you, so you get back and you say, well, let's let it grow a few days. Well, same thing with your work for God. You went and talked to somebody or you had a work to do. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was uh, you went out of your way to be nice to somebody and uh, they said hmm, who appointed you God? Who made you God? Instead of them being nice, so nice to you, they gave a, a little, they said something back that wasn't so nice. You understand what I'm saying? They weren't quite so nice. You were being nice to them, but maybe they weren't so nice to you. So you had a bug in your garden. Or you had a weed or a, a, a thorn in your garden. So, but being the person that you are, being the God called person that you are, you say, Well, I'm so sorry you feel that way. I, 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 God loves you, I love you. And you go on your way. And you're still nice to them. Regardless whether they're nice to you or not, you're nice to them because you are who you are. You're, you're God, you're, you're God, uh, born again Christian, a creature of God, a son of God, or a daughter of God, a child of God. All right, your garden's growing, it's getting bigger and bigger. Then you look at it and say, what is that? You look in there and you plant your beautiful, beautiful squash plant is drying up and dying right there on the rug. There's a live one, a live one, a dead one. A live one, a dead one. What is wrong with that? You, it's dead, so you pull it up. There's a cut worm has done to cut the root right off of that plant. It's cut the root right off of it and it's dead. You put all that work into it, and it's something that's come along and killed your plant that you've done all that work for. You chopped it, you sprayed it, and still something's come along. And there's another, whoop, what's in that row over there? Something that, there's a mold that's come down that road, and you got carrots over here, and that thing is eat your carrots. They root them right up. Got a mold over there that's just tearing your garden up. And you put all that work in Yeah. You know, I just don't believe this garden stuff is worth it. I just, I'm getting so tired of this. I put all this work into it. I'm trying to do, make it have a good garden. Same thing with your Christian walk. Same thing with your work for the Lord. You feel like sometimes you're weary. You're just weary. It says in this scripture up here, and let us not be weary. In well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. All right, sometimes weary of always going out of our way and being nice to people, even when they rub you the wrong way, weary of being nice. Sometimes we're weary of setting the Christian example, always giving 110% in your church. Setting the Christian example, 
being Christ-like, that sometimes we get weary. Always loving your children when maybe they're not always so nice or they say something like, I didn't ask to be born. You ever had a teenager say that to you? Some of us have. Some of us have. And you have unconditional love for them. But they say it and they don't really mean it. But they may say it. Maybe you're weary of trying to please your spouse and keep a balance of a happy marriage and a family. And sometimes you're just weird. You understand what I'm saying? You're just, just weird sometimes. You get tired. Maybe you're weary of doing the work that God's called you to do. Even when people don't seem to appreciate the time and the effort that you put into it. At least sometimes you feel that way. It may not be the case. But sometimes you might feel that way. And sometimes you say, well, Lord, I do this all the time. Isn't there anybody, there's 100 people in this church. Isn't there anybody else can do this? Maybe God says, no, I've chosen you to do this because you're the one that I need to do. It. You're the only one that can handle it the way I need it done. Because there may not be but one person in the church that you specifically will touch, but you're the only one that can touch them in the way that God needs them touched. So, we're working on a project that Never seems to get completed. Seems like you work in that project, work in that project, work in that project, and never seems to get finished. Doing seem like you're spinning your wheels, so to speak. It's like that garden. But I'm telling you folks, if you keep working, if you keep doing, and trust in God, it's not about you, it's about Him. It's about God. Because your strength doesn't come from out here. It doesn't come from it doesn't come from here. It comes from in here. Because the Christ that is alive and well in you. Your spirit man inside is alive and well. Regardless of what goes on the outside. Regardless of how much heartbreak you have on the outside. Regardless of how you, it's not about your feelings. It's about the spirit man of Jesus Christ that lives on the inside of you. That's where your strength comes from. You know, it's no sin in becoming weary. There's no sin in that. It doesn't disappoint God not one bit. Because he has unconditional love for you. Unconditional love. Absolutely unconditional. And he knows the intent of your heart. It's just like what I just said about the child that says, I didn't ask to be born. You may even say something to God and say, God, I don't want to do this anymore. And he knows the intent of your heart. And he knows that if he asks you to do it, you'll do it anyway. Because you love the Lord so much with your personal relationship. That garden, you pull up those dead plants, you get rid of the moles, you spray the insects, and you weed the weeds. And all that pretty green will turn into a, a harvest. And you know sometimes, just before the harvest, just before the harvest, you feel like you're going to faint because you work so hard. Just before the harvest of the work that you're doing in the church, just before, when it's your due season, you know when it's your due season? Because you feel like you're about to faint. You feel like you, you feel like you might be ready to give up. That's when it's your due season. That's when it's harvest time. Because all during the growing time, all during the, the time when things are looking beautiful and green and pretty and everything's growing and you're excited because it's all green and lush, that's not the harvest time. The harvest time comes when the seed dies. When the seed dies, that's when yourself, you die to self. You get yourself out of the way. That's what my next message is going to be about. <laughs> self, self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. 
But when you die to self, get self out of the way. Get king self out of the way. Get it gone. And put God first. You see, just before harvest time, things start to wither up. Things start to die. The leaves change from green. They get different colors sometimes, just like the leaves on the trees this year. They're just starting to turn a little bit. They'll turn golden, gold and red, orange. And they'll look pretty good. But then they'll fall away. They'll fall off. The corn dries up before it's harvest time. It's got to dry up. It's got to die. All that beautiful lush green stuff has to die away. The work that you're doing has to come to a completion before you can harvest, before you see the harvest. So don't give up. Let it come to completion. Praise God. Those who are weary, God wants you to know that you're so close to your due season. There may be some of you sitting right in here tonight. That's weird. You're just tired. You just, you just before wanting to give up, but you're so close, you're about to see it, you're about to taste it, it's, it's within your reach. And there's about to be a manifestation of God in your life. It's not a time to throw in the towel. It's time to lift up your head, and there's a rumbling in the mulberry bush, there's a shaking going on in the heavens and on the earth for your sake, concerning what you've been praying for. And there's another promise from God that I want to read you. God will not put more on you than you can bear in any work that you're doing. It says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, No temptation have overtaken you except as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the Temptation will also make the weight of escape that you may be able to bear. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. When you feel like you're about to faint, when you can't do any more, about to give up, that's when you feel like you're about to quit. Then you let go and you let God. You let go and you let God. Praise God. I want to go to one more scripture because I'm talking tonight to those who walked into church tonight with their head hung down or those that had their head lifted up high. Yet there's something in the back of their mind that needed to have some answers. Those that have been praying for a specific breakthrough. Those that have been laboring under a burden of uncertainty. Those that simply had questions about what God's doing in the church. Or well, maybe they don't quite understand their part in the church. For those who are just about to give up and lose their faith, God's encouraging you to keep the faith. Don't faint. Stand still. Your due season is here. It's not about you. It's about Him. Even if when you feel faint, the God in you is not faint and He's not weary. I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 28 through 31. This is my closing scripture. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God. The creature of all the earth. The creator of all the earth. He never grows weary. Never, he never grows weak or weary. No one can measure his debts. Or his understanding. He gives power to the weak. And strength to the powerless. The important part of that verse right there. I'll read it again. That's verse 29. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youth will become weak and tired. And young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord. That's us. That's all of us in here. Those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Now how do you find new strength? By trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Remember, the 
because it's the God in us in whom we find strength to a new season. That's all I have, folks. Remember where your strength is. It's in the God that's already in you. He's there all the time. He's never weak. He's never tired. He never sleeps. He's always there. All right. Let's stand to our feet, those that can, and will, and I will end with prayer. Don't forget to get your squash and your cucumbers and stuff in yeah. it. Don't want the molds and the cut worms to get it. <laughs> it's due season time for harvest. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, tonight for these people. Lord, they're such wonderful people. They love you so much. And Lord, I know you love them any more, even more. <clears throat> and Lord, the reason they love you is it's all your fault. The only one they can blame is you because of the love that you showed them. And Lord, you filled them with that love. And Lord, all they can do is share it with somebody else, Lord, because it's not a love that they can bind up and all a love that they can hold in. It's got to be let out. And I thank you for it all. And I thank you for them coming tonight. And I pray again, Lord, for your safety and protection in the storm. And Lord, let not the giant of fear overcome anybody, but let this giant of faith, the wonderful power of God, protect us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.